Welcome back to another playthrough series. This time I am going to do a complete two-player game of Kingsburg. Uh, it's a worker placement dice rolling sort of Euro type game. Uh, and it's not that complicated. I'll, however, I'm probably going to mess things up. Um, and I'll go over a little bit, I guess, of the initial setup. Um, so how the game basically works, if you look right down here, there's a series of uh, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Um, and these little spaces with the parchment looking things are the king's favor spaces. And this is spring, summer, and fall, and winter. Uh, and you'll see how that works as we play through the turns. There's going to be five complete uh, seasons in the game. And we're trying to score victory points. And you do that in various ways. You build buildings to get victory points. Uh, you can take the Joker for a victory point. or different ways to get victory points, beating the Barbarians. All right, so uh, I'll just show you a player mat and one of the players. Uh, and I guess there's also resources up here. And you can see there's a whole cadre of different characters that give you different things. Uh, so you roll dice and you put your dice out on the board. You can block other people and stuff. So let me just... Uh, get into a player board to show you how that works. So this is a little bit closer view of, uh, of a player's board. Each player gets one of these uh, when they start the game, and it can play up to five players. Uh, but in the two-player game, there's a, a little bit of a variant, variant that you need to use. So there's five different colors. You can get three dice in each color for the game, for one for each character that's playing. Uh, and there are little tokens here, and these go onto your play mat to show which uh, building you've built and when you build a building they have special abilities and we'll get into that as we play the game of course for the two-player variant of course the idea of the game is everyone's going to roll their dice in spring summer and fall and uh, try and curry favor from the king's court and the different people in there and then that will get you resources and victory points and soldiers and various things uh, in the two-player variant you're going to take three dice from a player that's not in the game in our case, we're going to have black and red playing, uh, and two dice, again, from another player that's not playing. And the first thing we do on a turn is we're going to roll these three dice and add them up, stick them out on the board, so it's effectively going to block one space. I'm going to roll two of the other dice and block some more spaces, uh, because when you only have two players, there's a lot of options, and this, this tries to simulate a little bit of the blocking that can go on in a three, four, or five player game. Um, I think instead of explaining a whole pile of things and going on and on, I think I'm just going to get kind of right into it. Uh, and I guess let's cover one more thing here. I guess I'll cover it as we do it, but there is a stack of five cards. A one, two, three, four, and five. These are enemies that we have to fight in the winter phase. Uh, and there's five number one cards, five number two cards, five threes, five fours, five fives. So you get some variety in the game. There's things like orcs and zombies and demons and what have you. And some of your buildings give you benefits versus certain monsters, but you don't know what's coming till it happens. So let's get into doing, I guess, a season uh, and I'll show you how the game works. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm really zoomed in on the board here, but the first part of every season, the number one here, uh, is called the King's Favor. And you see a little building symbol here with a minus in front of it. It means the player with the least amount of buildings uh, is going to get to roll a bonus die, one white die, to add to the three dice that they already roll for their turn. But because it's the first turn, of course, everyone has equal number of buildings, which is zero. Uh, and if people have the same number of buildings, then you have to look at resources. Whoever has the least amount of resources will get the white die. If there's a tie, uh, then nobody gets, uh, then, oh, sorry, the tied players both get a resource. Uh, that's how it happens, and nobody gets a bonus white die. So at the beginning of the game, the black player and the red player are both going to get uh, one resource of their choice. And so I think we're going to take, um, the black player is going to take a stone, so I'm going to put that up here, I can't see that. And the red player is going to go ahead and say, oh, they, they want a gold. So they're going to take a gold, put that into their stash. So that is um, basically the first 
space of the season. And now we're going to move to two, and two is now spring. And I'm going to back off a bit here because we're going to start rolling some dice. And I'll show you how, uh, and basically spring, summer, and fall, which is right just off the camera here, all operate the same way. So let's go ahead and we're going to do spring now. Okay, so I backed off the board here. So what happens uh, on every spring, summer, and fall turn is they try to curry favor from the different um, people in the court, and maybe even the queen and the king himself. Uh, so in a two-player game, the first thing we need to do is roll three dice from a player that's not playing, which would be green, and we just toss them, and we look at the total, four, five, six, so that's a seven. So we take those dice, and they're going to go out on the seven space. Now that space is effectively blocked. No one can use it. The next thing we do in a two-player game, throwing dice around, is you roll two dice of another player that's not playing. It's also a seven. Uh, it's interesting, so this gets right into the rules right away. So, of course, uh, the 7 is blocked already, so we can't put a 7 there. So what you do in that case is you put them out individually. So the 6 is going to go here, and the 1 is going to go there. So we actually have three spaces blocked now from our players. Uh, and now it is the player's turn to go. So they take their three dice each. Uh, you would roll your own dice, of course. I'm just rolling them all together to save a bit of time. And so let's see what we get. And so the black player gets uh, 11, 12, and the red player gets 7. So how do we set up initiative order? Well, it's an interesting way to do it. The person with the lowest total dice roll uh, goes first in initiative order, and it just happens to be that red is first. So red's going to be going first, black's going to be going second. What they do is they take turns allocating dice out on the board. Uh, and so red gets to go first, so red has two threes and a one. Uh, so again, the seven space is blocked. He can't use the two threes for the six space, it is blocked, uh, so he could use a four using the three and one and he can't use a one by itself either because it's blocked so he can use a three and a four so i think what he's going to do is he's going to allocate his uh, number three die to the number three spot red's turn now we go over to black and you just go back and forth until everyone has allocated their dice uh, so now black has a total of 12 so if black wants to they can put it right here which gives them two resources of their choice and a plus two marker. And what these little plus two markers are is on a on a uh, spring, summer, or fall turn, you can use one of these to pump up the total of your uh, dice roll by two, or a single die up by two. So that's what that would do. So black can put it on 12. He also has a five. He could put it on 11. Uh, he's got a one. He can't use the six and one for seven. Uh, he can't use his 5 more for 6, so I think he is just going to go right ahead, allocate all of his dice, totaling 12, and take the 12 spot. And now we're back to red. Red has a 3 and 1 left. Again, he can't use the 1, and he's already used the 3. So he's going to add up 3 and 1 for 4. Boom! That's all you do for allocating your dice. So everyone goes around the table uh, in order, and you just keep cycling until all the dice have been allocated. So now you just effectively go up from starting from 1 all the way to 18, and you collect resources for the spring. So I'm going to remove the blue, which is a non-player, and the green, uh, because they don't do anything in a two-player game. So we go over here to the number 3 spot. This is red, and red is going to collect one lumber. So we take one lumber from the supply, we add it to their out their area with their stuff. Next in order is the number four. He can either get one gold or one lumber. So he is going to take a gold. So now he has a total of two gold and one lumber. And again we go, you know, no one on seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we get over here to twelve. And black, of course, can get these little green sack symbols uh, mean a resource of your choice. So he has I'll take his dice off. He gets to choose two resources of his choice. I think he's going to take a stone and a gold, add that to his thing, and he also gets one of these little plus two tokens. So he's going to take that as well for 
use in the future. Now that ends uh, gathering resources for the spring, and now at the end of that is a build phase. Uh, so each player gets to build one building of their choice. So we'll start with the red, because red is first in order, so they get to decide uh, which building to build. So we'll go down, uh, pan in on the red's uh, alloc uh, building allocation chart here and see what they're going to build. Okay, so here we are at red's player area. And I should say on the build chart, you have to build the first building before you can build the second one, the third, the fourth. So you couldn't just go ahead and build a church. You have to build uh, buildings in column one first before you can uh, start in column two. So if you build an inn, uh, then the next time you could build a market if you have the resources, but you couldn't build a chapel if you didn't build a statue. So it's pretty straightforward. And you get immediate uh, benefits and here in little victory point symbols. Summer zero, summer one, summer more. Uh, and red player has two gold and one lumber. He's going to spend his two gold right now. And he is going to make uh, the statue. And so you just take one of his little builder tokens and you cover up the space uh, designating that that uh, building has been built. The statue is going to give him an immediate three victory points. Uh, and it says at the beginning of each productive season, uh, if you have rolled the same number on all your dice, you may re-roll one of them. So that's the benefit of having the statue. So let's go over, give him three victory points, and then we're going to go over to the black player and see what they're going to build. Okay, so here we are in the black uh, player's area. He has two stone and one gold. Uh, and again, conveniently, the tracker is right here, and we just know that red got three victory points for building the statue. One, two, three. It's as simple as that. Uh, and now we're looking at the black player's uh, build board and trying to decide what he wants to build. And I believe he's going to build a guard tower. And a guard tower costs one gold and one stone, which the black player has, covers up the guard tower. Uh, and the guard tower is going to give him one victory point. So, boom, he gets one victory point. And it's also going to always give him now plus one in battle. Uh, and battles, I said, take place in the winter, uh, and you have to have enough um, soldiers or battle ability to either uh, tie or defeat uh, the attacking army, or you, were ta you will suffer some penalties for that. All right, that effectively takes care of the entire spring season. Let's go back to the little mini tracker board, and we'll move on to uh, part three of the first season. Okay, so we're moving from two to three, and this is another King's Favor uh, section of the board. And what it means here, now it says a plus symbol in front of the house and an arrow over to a victory point. And what this means is the King will be very pleased with uh, which or whomever has the most uh, buildings. And as we know, uh, Red and Black both built one building, uh, so they both uh, are they're tied for the most number of buildings. So if it was a five player game one and three players had three buildings and the other two had two, it's basically wh whoever has the most number of buildings right now is going to get one victory point. So in case of a tie, the tied players with the most number of buildings both get a victory point. So red is going to go from three to four, black's going to go from one to two. And now we are finished with this and we move directly to the summer phase. So over to number four, and summer is another productive phase, and so we are going to be rolling um, dice again. So let's go ahead, we're going to do, I think we're going to finish off summer, it's going to end our video, and then uh, uh, episode two or part two, I'm going to go five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm going to split the videos that way, I think I'm going to do four, four and four, uh, just for time-wise, I want to make the videos so long. Uh, there, so there'll be a total, I guess, of 10 videos, uh, and that will be Kingsburg series. So let's now move on to summer. So I'm going to pan out again, and we're going to start rolling some more dice. Okay, so I panned out again. So now we're at the beginning of the summer production phase. And of course, with a two-player game, uh, we're going to need to roll our three dice and put them on the board as blockers. And that's three, four, five. So the number six spot uh, is now blocked. And we're going to roll with two blue ones, and we get the number seven. So the number seven spot is also blocked. And now we are going to take, I just do it again all together, take the red dice, the black dice, 
we roll them. Uh, red has a total of seven, uh, eight, and black has a total of eight, nine. All right, so we just put those dice there, and of course, um, eight is less than nine, so red is going to go first again, and they're still in first order. Had there been a tie uh, between red and black, say they both rolled eight, then the turn order would remain the same. It's only if there's uh, one is higher or lower that you actually are going to flip the, the turn order here. All right, so I'm going to probably zoom down a little bit, try and get all of the uh, people here that we can allocate dice to on the board, and we're going to start allocating the dice for the summer. All right, zoomed in a little bit more. I don't know if it's too much more effective. Uh, and we have red going first. So seven is blocked. Can't use his uh, four and three. So he's got a four, a three, and a one. So he could use, uh, he could go right to the eight spot, which would give him two gold. Um, or he could put one dice on the one, and then one on the four, one on the three, but then black might be able to block him on the five or the three. So I think this is where you get a little bit into the, how do you want to block somebody, or do you want to just go for the things that you want? Um, and let's see, he could also take a five. He has a four and one. Um, wow, this is tricky. I think he's just going to go ahead and he's going to take the eight spot, uh, giving him two gold. You don't collect anything right now, we're just allocating the dice. So basically, uh, Red's used up all his dice, so now it's Black's turn. And Black has a five, a three, and a one. So he has a total of nine. He could take this one, which means you can take either a gold and lumber or a stone and lumber, or he can allocate uh, dice uh, to different things now, just because um, he has three dice and red has none left. And I think black's going to go ahead and do that. He's going to take a victory point by taking this space. He's going to use the three uh, and take that. And he's going to use the five here. So you can, and of course, I just put all the black down because uh, red has no dice. You would go and turn order back and forth. So if red had only used one die and black uses a die, then you go back to red, back to black. All right, and now that that is the end of placing uh, the dice onto the board, again, I'm going to remove the green and the blue. They play no part here. So black, first thing black gets here, uh, takes that die off the chart, he gets a victory point. So he's going from two to three. So he's only one away now from red. We go over to the number three space. Black has his die on there. That's going to net him one lumber goes over to his stuff. And now we have a new symbol here, and that's the guard symbol for black has number five. And what we do there is I have to go up a little bit. At the top here is a, uh, a guard space, and it goes zero, one, two, three, all the way up to nine. Uh, and now black gets a guard. So the king gives black a guard. Now that's going to come into effect when the battle happens, which we look at the battle card at the uh, end of the season. So he's already gotten himself one soldier to help fight for the winter time. All right, nothing left to board. Now we go over to red and red now has all of his dice, take them all off. He is gonna get two gold for the resource pile. Okay, so now uh, we're going to do red I think I did it in opposite order last time. Red should actually be building first. I think I might have done black. It doesn't really matter. I believe, you know, if five people are playing the game, they're probably all going to be building buildings simultaneously. Uh, I think it rules-wise, you're supposed to do it in order, and it's maybe so other players know what you're building. Uh, and then, because then there's victory points and stuff you need to track as well. So let's do it that way. Uh, I may get it backwards once in a while. Not really a critical issue, but I think rules-wise you're supposed to do it in order of which way you're supposed to go. So let's go to the red player board and see if red is going to be able to or wants to build another building. Okay, so for red's build I messed up uh, putting the resources to the wrong side for black and red, but it's all better now. Red has two gold and one lumber to build something. He could build an inn or he can build a barricade. And I think he is actually going to build the inn. He's going to spend one gold and one lumber, uh, and that's going to allow him to build the inn. Now, it gives him no victory points, but at the end of each summer, uh, every year, you receive one of the plus two tokens. So, as you can see, as you start building more buildings and things, there's more you have to remember. 
So that's red building. Uh, he's left with one gold left. And now we're going to go over to black um, and see what they're going to build. All right, here we are at Black's area. Uh, he has one stone and one lumber. And looking at his choices, the only thing that he can build is a barricade. Um, and so I think he is going to spend his one lumber and he is going to build a barricade. Again, gives you zero points, uh, but it does, and it gives you plus zero in battle, but it becomes plus one uh, if you're fighting goblins. So may be a benefit it may not but it will you know then you can start looking at building the crane the town hall these kinds of things all right back to um the uh, turn sequence here and i'll wrap it up for this part one and of course i'd be remiss if i didn't say winter is coming <clears throat> yeah all right uh, so we are here at the end of summer phase and beginning in part two our next video is going to be number five so i'll describe how all that works i'm going to do five six seven and eight will be the battle the end of the next episode so thanks very much for watching thanks for subscribing join me next time for part two of kingsburg the base game uh and we'll go from there all right thanks so much and see you next time <laughs>